So picture this. I'm face down in the water, and the water is about 40 degrees. The air above me is about 50 degrees, and I'm about 100 miles from the nearest village. I'm in the middle of the Alaskan backcountry, and I'm looking through a camera lens face down in the water waiting for a moment. I'm waiting for a fish to swim by. You see, when most of us think of salmon, we picture a nice meal at a restaurant or a stack of fillets behind the case at the grocery store. But I'm here because I want to see what these fish look like in the water, in the wild. And when that sockeye swims past me, pushing upstream to fulfill its life history, instinct takes over and I press the shutter. And in that moment, with the river and the salmon and the mountains in the distance, I can tell a story. As a visual journalist, I use photography and film to help decode the natural world and explore our place in it. And those stories have taken me to some pretty wild places. There was the time I ziplined into a wilderness area off the coast of California. Or the time I dove in the Coral Triangle in Indonesia, which is the heart of biodiversity in the ocean. Or just this past summer, when I snorkeled in a river in Montana in search of spawning bull trout as big as my leg. I'm drawn to wild places and to the scientists that study them. And my goal when I go out there is simple, to come back with a story. Seems that one seems to have taken off. Our world is changing faster perhaps than we can understand. But one surefire way we can try to understand is through storytelling. Stories are the way we communicate, the way we understand ourselves and the world around us. What motivates me is the challenge of trying to distill an idea into a moment. And perhaps nowhere is this decoding and distillation more important than beneath water. Water covers nearly two thirds of our planet, but many of us will not venture beneath the surface, that millimeters thick membrane that separates our natural environment from one where we are visitors. In venturing into the water, whether by snorkeling rivers or by diving beneath the waves, I take a camera in hopes of not only capturing what I see, but also what I feel. A deep sense of wonder and awe about our world. It's that sense of awe, I believe, that makes people stop and look and see. And we have to see now more than ever because we are an ocean planet. The ocean feeds us. It drives global climate. It makes life on Earth possible. And despite our long relationship with the sea, we still barely know it. But we are changing it. Over the last couple of years, I've begun diving into how our waste, especially plastics, enters the natural world and what becomes of it. I'm not alone. Researchers at the University of Rhode Island are trying to understand our impact on our ocean planet. But if we want the public to see just how critical healthy oceans are to our own health, then we have to find a way to connect them to a place that they might not ever experience for themselves. I believe visual storytelling has the power to do that. By connecting these issues to the public through visual media, I hope to inspire people to share with them this sense of awe so that we can see our planet in a new light. This is an aspirational goal, of course. It's a monumental task, but I'm not alone in that either. As a professor of journalism at the University of Rhode Island, I have the privilege of working with aspiring reporters and storytellers and filmmakers. And together, we've been able to tell the stories of our changing world. I became a photographer to explore and witness and experience the natural world. And I believe in the power of visual storytelling to stop an audience and to stop the public 
from their daily lives to pull them out for a moment and to have them experience that with me. And what I've learned in teaching the next generation is that it's going to take all of us to make an impact. And we are going to need all of the stories and storytellers that we can get. Thank you.